Christ the hope of glory. Men of prayer are men of authority. Lift your right hand and shout, All my enemies are finished. Open your heart, receive from Him. Christ is calling you. Brother, receive your hope. Christ is calling you. Sister, receive your life. Bridging Christ, the hope of glory. In whom there's life and hope for you. Hello, welcome once again to the Hope of Glory program. We are excited actually to hear testimonies of what God is doing in your life through this program. And please keep sending in those testimonies of change, testimonies of transformation, and um, we'll join you in celebrating God for what He's doing in your life. And uh, there are also so many of you that are giving us feedback on how these programs are helping you. You are getting principles that are helping you in your day-to-day -day living. To God be all the glory. And please, we would like to ask you and encourage you actually to continue watching the Hope of Glory television broadcast. Because as you do so, since our emphasis is really on the Word of God, your lives will never, never, never be the same. Praise God. Now, I want us to discuss something that I believe is very, very key. It is also in line with our mission of bringing hope to the hopeless and life to the dying and helping them become true disciples of our Lord Jesus. I want us to look at the subject, the God who never fails. The Lord our God is a God who never fails. I mean, there are so many things that fail in our life. There are so many things that fail in people's lives. Marriage can fail. Business can fail. Finances can fail. Prospects can fail. And so on and so forth. But I want us to know that there is someone who does not fail. You see, you can fail. People have failed. Husbands have failed. Wives have failed. People can fail to assist you. People can fail to keep their promise. But I want you to know this, that the Lord our God never fails. That is why we have to talk about it. And so we are looking at the God who never fails. The God who never fails. And the truth of the matter is, and this is the central message in our discussion today, that this our God will never fail in any way concerning our situations. If we put our trust and our confidence in Him, this our God always abides faithful and He's there to assist us, He's there to see us through and to intervene in our situations. Um, I like Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. I keep going back to this passage of Scripture because it's revelational. It's a very powerful portion of Scripture. It says, God speaking, Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. He says, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. And then he says, I will strengthen you. Yes. I will help you, and I will uphold you by my righteous right hand. What a word and what a promise. God will never fail concerning helping his children and concerning helping you, dear viewer, because he is a God of integrity. He is faithful, he is truthful, and he is always gracious and merciful unto his people. Now, in Numbers 23, for example, and verse 19, the Bible assures us that God is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to change his mind. 
Does he speak and not do it? Does he promise and not bring it to pass? Now, here it is. This our God is a God of integrity. He is truthful. He is faithful. And he is a performer. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 45. The Lord our God never fails. He does not fail, and he will never fail. Probably, I want us to look at what are some of the instruments that God has that makes it impossible for him to fail. What are some of the instruments that God has that make it impossible for the Lord our God to fail? What are some of the issues that we are talking about here? Number one, his power will never fail. The power of God that melts problems, that melts mountains, challenges and situations of life will never fail. Because I saw in the Bible that it was the power of God that raised Lazarus from the dead when people thought it was too late for him. John chapter 11 verses 38 to 44. John chapter 11 verses 38 to 44. The power of God raised Lazarus from the dead when he was already four days old in the grave. Listen to me. It doesn't matter who has said it is too late concerning your situation. It is too late. Nothing can be done to sort out your marital situation. Nothing can be done to address your financial situation. Nothing can be done uh, to address your business situation. I want you to know that the power of God will never fail to assist you. The power of God will never fail to assist you concerning your situation. Now, I also saw something in my Bible. Matthew chapter 9 and verse number 35, that the power of God heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. The power of God heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So, the power of God will never fail. In your life, is it in your marital situation, in your house, in your businesses, in your finances, the power of God will never fail. Are you sick in your body? I can pray for you right now, and the hand of God is going to touch you for your own healing and deliverance. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for that dear viewer who is sick in their body, sick in their body, and the situation is becoming unbearable. Lord, I'm releasing the healing anointing in the name of Jesus. Let there be change. Let there be deliverance. Let there be restoration. Let there be breakthroughs in health. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty Father, thank you for the healing miracle. Thank you, Father, for the transmission of power that has melted every bondage and captivity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, blessed be your holy name. Now, if you have been sick in your body now, hear this. I have prayed for you. You have been healed. And if you believe you have been healed, you know what you're supposed to do? You begin to do what you could not do before. Begin to do what you could not do before. For example, if you could not eat, begin to eat. Cough of food and eat. And you're not going to vomit. You are not going to vomit. Not at all. Now, if you could not wake up, you are bed reading. Now, it is time to rise up. Rise up and begin to walk. You see, take some practical steps to do things that you could not do as a result of the sickness. Now that you have been healed, the power of God is already all over your body right now. So you just go ahead and begin to do what you could not do before. Praise God. Congratulations. Because your life will never be the same. Praise God. Now hear this. We are talking about the various elements of the almighty God that will never fail in your life. Number one, we talked about the power of God. The power of God will never fail in your life. Number two, his hand will never fail. 
the hand of God will never fail in your life. Praise the name of Jesus. For example, the hand of God will never fail to deliver his children. Do you need deliverance? Are you in need of deliverance in your life? Are you in need of deliverance in your marriage? Are you in need of deliverance in whatever aspect of your life? You see, the hand of God will never fail to deliver you. Now, there is a scripture I would like to read with you. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 8 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 8 to 9. The Bible says, So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. That is what we are talking about. This was by the mighty hand of God. The children of Israel were stuck in Egypt, but the hand of God brought them out of there. The hand of God took them out of Egypt with great terror, with signs, wonders, and miracles. And the same hand of God brought them to a place flowing with milk and honey. And that is what I'm believing God for concerning you uh, that are watching me right now. Because what God did in the past, He is well able to do again for us even in our time. I mean, the Bible says, this our God, is the God who was and is and is to come. Yes. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 8. His power has never diminished. His ability to help us in our situations is still as intact as it was many years ago when he brought Israel out of the land of Egypt and took them to a, a land of promise. A land that flowed with milk and honey. And something good is happening to your own personal life. And I want you to know that your life will never be the same as you believe what you are hearing right now. Glory to God. He says here that the hand of God will never fail to deliver his children. But also, the hand of God will never fail to provide for his children. The hand of God will never fail to provide for his children. Psalm 145 and verse number 16. Psalm 145 and verse number 16. The Bible says that God opens his hand to satisfy the desire of every living thing. Are you not a living thing? You see, the hand of God is open to satisfy the desire of every living thing. I mean, in Psalm 37 and verse number 4, Psalm 37, verse number 4, the Bible says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will satisfy the desires of your heart. That is what we are talking about. The hand of God will never fail to provide for you. I don't know what you are looking for. Are you looking for promotion? Are you looking for the fruit of the womb? Are you looking for a scholarship? Are you looking for finances for your house building project? Are you looking for marital peace? There is no peace in your marriage. You see, what we are saying is that the hand of God will never fail to provide for you. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, the Bible says, this is Apostle Paul praying, he says, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus says, my God will supply all your needs. The hand of God is there to provide for your needs. And it will never fail to do so. And so I decree right now that the hand of God shall give you success. The hand of God shall give you promotions, open doors, victories on every side, scholarships, divine supplies. Whatever you are looking for is available in the hand of God. And may it be stretched forth in your direction. For your own testimony. In the mighty awesome name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, what else about God will never fail in our lives? So the hand of God will never fail to provide for his children. And this you have to know. God is able to change every situation. Every circumstance of your life. That is what we are talking about. 
God will never fail. And so far we have said his power will never fail. Number two, his hand will never fail. Yes, his hand will never fail to deliver his children and his hand will never fail to provide for his children. And number three, his hand will never fail to fight for you. The hand of God will never fail to fight for you. When Pharaoh pursued Israel after they left Egypt, it was the right hand of God that sank him and his army into the Red Sea. And that is what we are talking about. The hand of God will never fail to fight for you. Anyway, we will continue with this discussion after this short break. God bless you. the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of it. Welcome back. God bless you. We continue discussing the subject, the God who never fails. Because I want you to have this assurance that no matter how difficult your situation may be, you see, God will never fail to assist you. God will never fail to help you. God will never fail to intervene in your kind of situation. To Him be the praise, the glory, and the honor. Praise God. Now, let's look at another aspect of God that gives us the audacity and the boldness to declare that this our God will never fail in your life. Now hear this. His promises will never fail. We are talking about the promises of God. In Joshua 23 and verse number 14. Now listen to this. Joshua 23 and verse number 14. The Bible says, Behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. This is Joshua speaking. And you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one word of them has failed. Look at that. It's talking about the promises that God gave to his people, Israel. It says here that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one word of them has failed. Praise God. I mean, this reminds me of Numbers 23 and verse 19. Numbers 23 and verse 19, where the Bible says that God is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to change his mind. God is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to change his mind. That is what we are talking about, that the promises of God will never fail. And I want you to know there are so many of you watching me right now that have received promises from God, words of revelation, maybe in the course of prayer, or somebody gave you a word of prophecy, a word of knowledge, you see, a word of wisdom, an insight that promises you some great things in life. And it's like, how is this going to happen? Because some of you have been waiting for two years, three years, five years for that word of prophecy to come to pass, that word of revelation to come to pass, and you are being tempted to give up on the promise of God. Listen to me, there is no need to give up. And you don't have to give up because the promises of God will never fail in your life. Praise the name of Jesus. In Psalm 89, verses 34 to 35, Psalm 89, verses 34 to 35, God spoke, he says, Once have I sown by my holiness that I shall not lie unto death. He says, Neither shall I break my covenant with him or alter the things that I have spoken. So you need to understand that this our God is a holy God. He does not lie. It is impossible for him to lie. It is not possible for him to lie. 
You need to understand this. So if you are running with a particular promise of God, hold on to that promise. It shall come to pass. It may look difficult for you now, but it shall come to pass. It may look like it is not going to happen, but the truth of the matter is, it shall come to pass. Our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we ask or imagine according to the power which is at work within us. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. There is nothing impossible with our God. There is nothing impossible with our God. And so I want you to be confident in this God because he shall come through for you. His promises will never fail. Can I add one more thing here? His message will never fail. That is true. The message of God will never fail in your life. Now, two things about the message of God that I would like to bring across to you very quickly. Number one, the message of God are new every morning. The message of God are new every morning. So you need to understand that every time you wake up in the morning, you wake up with a new allocation of the message of God. You wake up with a new allocation, a new dosage, a new allocation of the message of God. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23. Secondly, we see that the message of God endure forever. The message of God endure forever. Psalm 136 and verse number 1. Psalm 136 and verse number 1. The message of God endure forever. Now, how did Blind Bartimaeus receive his miracle? In Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. The Bible says that this man, Blind Bartimaeus, in faith cried out to Jesus. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So, it was mercy that terminated the blindness of blind Bartimaeus. The blindness of this man was destroyed because of the mercies of God. And when God decides to be merciful unto you, listen to me, no devil can stop you. No power of darkness can frustrate what God wants to do in your life. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16, still talking about the mercies of God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 16. It says, Let us therefore come before the throne of His grace with boldness, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. He says, When we come before the throne of grace in prayer, we receive mercy. And we need the message of God to help us in our time of need. And His message will never fail in our lives. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, this is an important discussion. I believe that God has really spoken here. Now, hear this. We can go on and on and on and talk about this, but I really want us to engage in prayer. I really want us to they are God with our faith. Because, you see, this our God is a God who never fails. Jeremiah 32 and verse number 27. He says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Now, that is one way of saying, I cannot fail. It is impossible for God to fail. He will not fail concerning that which you are believing Him for. That is why I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. And please don't allow anything to hinder your blessing. And that is why I want to say that if you are not born again, you better receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Or if you have been living in sin, you call yourself a child of God, a Christian, but you are living in sin, you are not living right, you better sort that out with God because He wants to do something awesome for you. He wants to do something glorious in your personal life. And so please, if you are not born again or you are in need of spiritual restoration, 
You are already born again, but you have not been living right. Why don't you follow me in this prayer now? Because Jesus wants to correct the situation in your spiritual life. Let us pray. You follow me in this prayer. You say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me and have mercy upon my life. I now receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. And I shall walk with Him all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, because I now receive spiritual restoration. I receive the joy of forgiveness, the joy of redemption, and the joy of restoration of my spiritual life. Thank you, Lord of glory, in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Your life will never be the same. I mean, if you prayed with us, you were not born again, you're not born again. And if you prayed with us and you are in need of spiritual restoration, rejoice. Because God has given you the restoration that you have, you know, been looking for. Praise God. Now, I want to pray for you. We have said by the Spirit of God that God never fails. He never fails. And he will never fail concerning your situation. And that is why I want us to stand together in faith. To believe this God as I pray that he will intervene in your kind of situation. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone watching me now. Especially those that are going through some difficult situations in life. And they are saying, Lord, I need you to come through for me. Lord, I'm committing and commending them to you right now. May you stretch forth your mighty hand, even that hand that never fails. That hand that never fails to fight for God's children. Lord, may you release it in the direction of everyone watching me now. And let there be testimonies. Let there be breakthroughs. Let there be open doors, success and prosperity, healings, deliverance, restoration of bread on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. Because nobody among those watching me right now will ever, ever be the same. Everyone has received a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you. In Christ, the hope of glory, in whom there's life and hope for you. Open your heart, receive. Christ is calling you, brother receive your hope, Christ is calling you, sister receive.